Hello everyone, this is Mark with Timber by Mark, and this is my 5 foot by 4 foot Purple Heart Frame, the second part. Today we're going to look at uh, the dados and rabbits we had to cut. Remember this frame is 2 inches thick and 6 inches wide. I set up a, a dado stack a half inch, and it was a lot safer than trying to put a 1 inch in there. So what I did was I boards are all perfectly squared and I do everything once so I go through each one and cut a half inch dado all the way through and this uh, then I cut the second one and there was just a little hair probably about a sixteenth of the mouth just knock out with my finger and this is for the uh, the rabbit for the frame or for the uh, canvas print that's going to be in there. It's three quarters of an inch deep so you actually make it a little bit deeper so the frame uh, can set in nice and the turn buttons can hold the frame in place. But repetitiveness so we can get some consistency. You do one and then you keep doing all of them until you got them all finished. So I set this back up on the bench in between my bench dogs and I'm removing that little bit that was left from the table saw with a three-quarter inch uh, skewed uh, rebate plane and I made pretty quick work of it. With this purple heart, uh, it's hard to read the grain on some of it. It is interlocking in some areas and uh, purple heart tears off pretty bad. So uh, right there I'm pulling. Uh, you saw me pushing on the other one. So sometimes it's hard to read. You got to play with it. Sometimes you gotta deal with tear up, which can be bad. Uh, with this frame, I, I hand plane after everything, scrape it, and then I do do a final sanding uh, to get rid of any kind of imperfections. And also, these edges are extremely sharp and they hold their edge because the, ed the timber is just so hard and dense. Uh, I actually cut my thumb really bad on the, getting it pinched on one of the corners, so I alleviate the corners for the client for splinter reasons and safety reasons. Here I'm cutting in the, it's a simple molding profile on uh, either side of the, plane, of the uh, frame. So I took a half inch uh, molding plane and just ran it at a, about a 45 degree angle. I just did it by eye and I keep checking because usually on the far end when you start you get a little deeper so every now and then I'll take a couple passes just on the end to make everything uniform this is just me doing the second side and I, I don't take off too much at a time being that the tear out can be pretty bad but these planes that I use uh, really cut down on the tear out so I have them set to take a medium size shaving and you can see the nice ribbons that come off of that uh, plane. It's always nice when you have beautiful shavings. And here we're going to prep for the inlay. This is a piece of zebra wood. <coughs> and right now I'm going to join it to make sure it's flat. And this is a trying plane. And it works really well. Uh, the blades are extremely sharp. This particular piece you see me working on the ends, it had a significant dip. And you go until you get one full strip and then you know it's straight. Uh, this piece was a little long for my six inch joiner, so you gotta be able to do it by hand. The last one that I used there is actually a really long joining plane. It was probably stamped 1800 uh, by Ohio Tool Company. Not uh, mid 1800s, I'm sorry. short work of, the, of that and you can see how it's getting pretty straight. But I actually refurbished that uh, plane, brought it back to life and it cuts like a dream. I also have a number 8 Bailey, Stanley Bailey that I use but it's nice getting these old wooden planes out there and using them. But I went back with the wide, I cut it a little flat, and then I uh, 
by hand with uh, small planes, just so you can get a perfect fit, no gaps. Here I set up the feather board to make sure it's staying pressed inside against the fence. I do it for each one consistently. And here, uh, zebra wood tends to really warp when you cut it. And that's why I cut it fat. And right here I set up the shooting board and I'm using the tabletop since it's flat as a reference. And I have it set in there with a couple of screws. And what I'm doing is just running the edge of the plane on the bench and taking off just a little bit at a time until it gets perfectly straight. So here we're going to fit the inlay. This can be a tedious process, but once you do it, you get uh, pretty efficient at it. See how it kind of will warp a little bit, but it'll fit in there. You just kind of work it in. So here I'm just taking off a little bit at a time until I get my perfect fit and I work it in. I was doing this on live stream and I uh, was answering some questions. But it looks like I've almost got it there. Just a little bit on the edge. I think I think I got it. Yeah, I'm taking off a little, little bit more. I really am pretty angry when I like to get a really snug fit. Uh, no gaps. same as the frame so when you plane it, it you don't have any problems if you're doing it every which way you could have problems with zebra wood uh, grain interlocks and goes back and forth and you can see how it's kind of on a skew so the grain does go two different directions in a lot of areas there I took a little bit off the inlay probably about a thousandth two thousandth of an inch and uh, it's set in there pretty good all glued up and now I'm uh, removing all the excess that's uh, sticking up both uh, the final uh, thickness of the frame. And I do it until it's dead flat and you can't tell there's uh, looks like the inlay was made in it. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the third part of the series. Please like and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitch. Uh, please share with your friends and I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and a comment and have a great day.